Good afternoon. I hope you're here to praise the Lord with me tonight and worship Him. The Bible says that those that come to Him must worship Him in spirit and truth. And I pray that this evening that you will receive of the Lord. I'm here to bring a fresh word to you. Hopefully it's an encouraging word, one that's going to lift you out up, uh, bring you out of uh, any discouragement or any kind of trial, help you, strengthen you during this time. Just want to say that Brother Bevis and I are praying for you, that we love you, that we're seeking God on your behalf every day, that God keeps you, keeps his hand up on you, strengthens you. And one of the things that the Lord has spoken to him and I both about is that the word of the Lord has to continue to go forward. Uh, we've got to continue bringing forth the word of God because, you know, the Bible tells us that the word is quick and powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword, dividing asunder of soul and spirit. In other words, it's going to get down into the very barrows of the bone. It's going to separate uh, that barrow from the bone. It's going to get down in there. It's going to bring life into our soul. And if there's anything that we need in this day and hours, that our soul be encouraged that we set our sights upon the Lord, that we stay encouraged, uh, that we trust Him, uh, that we continue to walk by faith. Uh, and uh, so as I come to you tonight, I just want to bring, try to bring an encouraging word to you. And one of the, I want to start out with a portion of Scripture that comes from Psalms 23 that says, The Lord is my shepherd, and we got to remember to keep our eyes upon the shepherd of our soul. He says, I shall not... Want. We shall not want. We shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. Now we've got to remember that when God pulls us aside, uh, you know, and, and as we're going through this, uh, uh, as we go through this time that we're, we're facing today, uh, it's almost like the Lord says, you know what, I'm going to pull you aside. I'm going to give you a reprieve. I'm going to I'm going to, uh, uh, you know, pull you into myself. You know, the scripture tells us that those that wait upon the Lord, he says, they, he will renew our strength. Uh, uh, and, and that we will mount up with wings as eagles. We will run and not be weary and we shall walk and not faint. So, you know, as the Lord pulls us aside into himself, he's bringing us in a place of restoration. Uh, to uh, put some things into us. To speak to our hearts. To settle our minds to quicken our spirits so that he can uh, begin to work his work within us. And, you know, I'm going to tell you, he lets nothing fall to the ground. Whatever we go through, he says all things work together for good for those that love the Lord. So everything that we go through that we have to endure, it's going to come out where God's going to work his will and his way through that thing. And, and in the middle sometimes of circumstances, whatever it looks like everything around us is falling apart, God is still in the midst of that. He's going to work his will and his purpose in us. And it's during those times that he pulls us aside uh, is when that we are being uh, restored and renewed and refreshed. And uh, every one of us have gotten caught up and can get caught up and can look back and see where life uh, can beat us up, where circumstances can be overwhelming, when trials can be so difficult that we don't know if we can make it another day. And so, so that when this kind of thing happens where God steps in and he pulls us aside and says, he says, you know what, I'm going to pull you unto myself and I'm going to begin to restore and begin to put some things in you, begin to encourage you and strengthen you in me and in the power of my mind. He also goes on to tell us in Psalm uh, uh, 23, he says, uh, He will lead and guide us in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. You know, sometimes our righteousness, the Bible tells us that our righteousness as, is as filthy rags. And, but we have to pick up the righteousness of which is birthed out of us through spending time with God so that we know how to follow his uh, direction. The Bible tells us that a good man steps are ordered by the Lord. Uh, he will direct our paths. He will lead and guide us into all truth. And it says, even though I walk through the valley, and we're all walking through a valley of the shadow of death, he says, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. So we can have confidence today. It says that God's rod and staff will comfort us. So we can have confidence today to know that God 
is in control and that he's going to see us through that. He's going to strengthen us. He's going to refresh us. He's going to restore us. He's going to uh, uh, put us back in right relationship with him. He's going to, the Bible tells us to stir up the gift of God that's within us. And we begin to stir that gift up. There's going to be things of God that's going to be coming forth out of us that we've never seen before. Uh, we're going to operate at a new level of faith. We're going to begin to move by the Spirit. We're going to begin to see God's overflow be given in and through our life. And I'm talking about spiritual things. I'm talking about the things that only God can give. He's going to begin to open up the heavens and begin to pour out to us those things that only come from Him. The Bible It also tells us in this little reading that I'm, I'm reading here, this verse is, come to me all and bring all of your weaknesses, uh, uh, whether they're physical, emotional, or spiritual, and rest in the comfort of my presence. Remember that nothing is impossible with me. So we've got to come to the place that we turn everything over to God. We've got to allow him to uh, answer, uh, uh, commit our way unto him as we commit to him and turn it over. The Bible says, cast your care upon him because he careth for you. So we've got to learn to uh, commit those things unto the Lord. And as we do that, he will take them and begin to work out his plan and purpose for our life. He says, I take your abide off of your problems. Begin to look at me. I surrender your will to me. And as you do that, I will bring forth the glory into your life. And so one of the things that the Lord really began to impress me with was uh, how God is a God who is a, a God of restoration. He will bring to us those things uh, back to us and restore those things back in our life that the enemy has stolen. The Bible tells us at the very beginning, let's turn to Genesis chapter 1, where God uh, told, uh, 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 he looked down, and of course he began to form the earth, uh, 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 and, and as he spoke the living word, it began to take on a form, and, and the Bible tells us that there was a order that was brought upon the earth, and it says that he made Adam, and he breathed the breath of life into Adam, and then it says, goes on to say that uh, he gave uh, Adam uh, dominion uh, and he took the rib out of Adam and he made Eve and, and they began to have the Lord look down and says that he was pleased and it says that uh, I'm going to give you the dominion I want you to go and uh, everything that's in the garden is yours except the one uh, you're not to touch the tree of good and evil can you say amen and the Bible tells us that at, in the very beginning that God had a plan for the beginning it says that he uh, even as, as he, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost were sitting in the heavens, it says uh, the Trinity, the Bible says that uh, God had a plan. He knew that uh, man was going to fail God. He knew that, that there was going to have to come a time when he was going to have to uh, send a redeemer uh, to the earth to redeem us, uh, to bring us back, to restore us back in right relationship because of the fall that took place at the very beginning. The Bible says that from the beginning that God had a plan. Uh, he said, he looked down and he, he began to talk with Jesus uh, uh, who was sitting in the heavens to let us make man uh, in our image. In other words, uh, I'm going to bring forth the very image of who I am upon the earth. I'm going to uh, bring forth man and I'm going to bring forth woman and they're going to be in our image. But I'm going to tell you something, uh, a church. That what happened is when, when uh, uh, Adam and Eve, when they began to uh, sin and they began to disobey uh, the uh, 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 obedience that God called forth, it says that uh, that they lost the very presence of God. They lost the uh, 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 the, the uh, harmonious walk that they had with God. It says that they walked in the coolness of the day before their sin. It said they had fellowship with God and they talked with God and God with them. But after their obedience, it says that God looked down and says that he regretted that he had made man. And, and what happened, it separated that sin, separated them from God. Uh, so God, but God, because he is God and that he knows all things that, and that he uh, had already in, in the heavens had made a plan uh, that he was going to send his son to lay his life down for you and I. And because of that, uh, and if we accept him and we come to him and we repent of our sins, he brings us back in right relationship. He'll restore us right back unto the Father as if we have never sinned. 
The Bible tells us in Genesis 1, 26, it said, God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion. And it says in verse 27, so God created man in his image, in the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And it says, and God blessed them. And God said, behold, I give you dominion. In other words, all authority was given unto man. Until they lost that authority. You see, the only way that we can keep authority and dominion uh, is that, that we follow God, that we surrender and yield to God. And as we yield, that we uh, lay aside those things that hinder us from walking the walk of faith. Unless we lay aside those things uh, and, and turn from the iniquities and sins that try to overcome us, uh, unless we uh, abide in Him and He in us, uh, you know, we can be uh, cut off from God's presence. Uh, uh, and it tells us in Genesis uh, chapter 2, 17, says, But of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that you eat thereof, you shall die. Uh, the Bible tells us that they overrode uh, God's commandments. They overrode the obedience of God, and they uh, partook of the tree that they were uh, uh, supposed to stay away from. And because of that, sin uh, uh, was birthed out in their life, and sin separated them from the presence of God. And the Bible tells it because of that, that God came down. He began to notice that they had uh, were hiding themselves. And don't you know that's what sin will do for us in our life? It'll cause us to hide ourselves. We try to hide our sins. We won't come, uh, uh, we won't come forward. We won't repent. We try to push it under the rug. We try to hide from God. But I want you to know that God sees us where we are. He will, uh, and He's calling for us to repent if we have uh, allowed ourselves to fall into sin or to fall short of the glory of God. The Bible tells us that every man uh, has fallen short. Every one of us are in need of a redeemer. Every one of us uh, are in need to fall on our knees unto a holy God and repent. And when we do that, God is a faithful God. He's a loving God and he will bring us back in right relationship with him. With, with him. And he says he will come and uh, commune with us, sup with us and us with him. And as we do that, we will then the fellowship of knowing God and communing and listening and hearing God will uh, be uh, an everyday occurrence, not just a Sunday go to church kind of experience. The Bible talks about having a, a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. There has to be something that comes in uh, when we're born again that changes us from the old into the new. Can you say amen? So we need to cultivate our relationship. We need to repent of those things that hinder us from being in full uh, fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And as we get those uh, things under the blood and we begin to walk in the newness of life, God himself will make himself known unto us. He will come. He will be our provider. He will, he will make, he be, be our way maker. He'll move the things out of our way. We begin to walk by faith. We begin to get an understanding that God is in control. Uh, in Isaiah 58, chapter 12, it says, And they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. Praise the Lord. In other words, if you've been born again, if you've been purchased by the blood, if God has called you out and set you apart for the glory, uh, then you need to walk in that newness of life. You need to walk with those things that used to hold you in bondage under your feet, and you then go forth and conquer in the name of Jesus. Can you say amen? So those things that uh, used to be, uh, should be under the blood that we now walk into the fullness and the newness of life where God himself is leading, guiding us into all truth. So Isaiah 58, 12 says, And they that shall be of thee. In other words, whoever, uh, you know, if we're of the Lord, uh, uh, that, that, uh, that, that they shall build the old waste places. They shall raise up the foundations, and thou shalt be called the repair of the breach, the restore or pass to dwell in. Can you say amen? Praise the Lord. In other words, the Bible tells us, if you remember in uh, Matthew chapter 16, it talks about uh, Peter uh, having a conversation with, uh, with, uh, with uh, the Lord. And he says, uh, uh, God, Jesus asked Peter, says, who do men say that I am? And uh, Peter says, well, some say you're uh, uh, John the Baptist. Some say you're Elias. Some say you're Jeremiah. So he said, but Peter, who do you say I am? He says, uh, well, thou art the, uh, the son of the living God. 
blood. He says, uh, flesh and blood. God told Peter, he said, flesh and blood had not revealed this unto you, but my Father, which is in heaven. He says, and upon this rock, upon this mutual understanding that you, you know who I am, Peter, and I know who you are. Uh, you've got a revelation. In other words, the scales have been removed from your eyes, and because the scales have been removed, and you get an understanding of who I am. He says, I'm going to build my church. This is where I'm going to build my church. He says, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. He says, and whatsoever, I'm going to give you the church. I'm going to give you Peter. I'm going to give you whoever. Put your name there if you've been born again. He says, if you've got the revelation of who Jesus is, he says, I'm going to give you the keys of the kingdom. And whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. In other words, I've given you the authority. And in other words, the authority's been given back to the body of Christ. That Jesus paid the price. He laid his life down. Uh, 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 he shed his blood uh, so that the church could take the authority uh, and put the enemy under our feet where he belongs. And that we stand our ground. And that we hold our uh, standard of holiness high. And that we don't allow the enemy of our soul to come in and to steal, kill, and destroy. That we push back the enemy. The Bible says when the enemy comes in like a flood, that I'll raise up a standard against it. And in other words, if you're holding up that standard of holiness, if you're holding up that standard of God, then when the enemy comes in, the blood is against him. In other words, he can't uh, go over the uh, uh, over the bloodline. He can't get past the bloodline because the bloodline, the blood of Jesus has power. The blood of Jesus has authority. The blood of Jesus uh, will cause you to uh, rise up against the enemy of your soul and not compromise what God has revealed unto you. Can you say man? I'm going to tell you this is a God thing. Uh, a man can't give it to you. Uh, uh, your family can't give it to you. The world can't give it to you. But God himself will open the heavens and give you a revelation of who Jesus Christ is. And because of that, you can stand strong in the power of his might. The Bible tells us to put on the whole armor of God that we can stand against the wiles of the devil. Can you say amen? Uh, that we've got our uh, feet shod with the preparation of the gospel and that we have on the helmet of salvation, that we've got the sword of the spirit, uh, which is the word of God, and we've got on our shield of righteousness. Can you say amen? In other words, we're prepared to stand uh, and hold our, uh, 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 and to go forth and conquer in the name of Jesus. In other words, the enemy has uh, gained a ground for long enough. It's time for us to rise up in the authority that Christ has given us and go forward and, and claim and bring back and put back those things that the enemy has stolen. Can you say man? <clears throat> Excuse me. It tells us in Isaiah chapter 58, 12, it says that we're to go and uh, build up the old waste places. Hallelujah. A waste place, it refers to that which has been ruined by sin. In other words, when God gives you the authority, when he fills you with the power of the Holy Ghost, when you're full of God and the authority has been given to you, the enemy has to bow at the name of Jesus. Can you say amen? The Bible tells us that if we go forth and the power of God is released in our life, the Bible says that we can lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Can you say amen? It says that there shall we to drink uh, any deadly, deadly thing, it shall not harm us. Why is that? It's not our authority, it's God's authority and power. Can you say amen? The Bible tells us that those waste places, uh, you know, the enemy from the beginning has always tried to overrun and uh, 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 to over, uh, 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 you know, come in and take that, you know, we've been in a battle from day one, back at the very beginning in the, in the garden. Uh, you know, when God set things in order, he gave the authority to Adam and Eve. Uh, you know, and, and here comes a sly enemy uh, to deceive and to steal and to kill. And we've seen it down through the ages of time where there's all that battle has always been between good and evil. And I'm going to tell you, we're going to be in that battle until the Lord comes back and raptures the church out of here. But it's up to us during that time, during the process of time that we're here, to hold the banner high. Uh, and to stand strong 
forward, to press forward, and to move forward and gain ground uh, and take authority in Jesus' name. We're not to be pushed back, but we're to go forward in his day. So it talks about, it, it, uh, I want us to go to Genesis, uh, 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 Genesis uh, chapter, it talks about Abraham, and uh, it says that uh, how Abraham, the, the walls, or the wells were, it talks about it, uh, 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 let's go there, uh, uh, Genesis chapter uh, 26, where it talks about Abraham uh, 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 dug some wells, and you know, there were wells that were uh, producing uh, good, fresh, clean, pure water. And it says that over the process of time that the uh, Philistines came in and began to fill the wells with dirt. Uh, you know, and so here's Isaac come along, who is a son of Abraham. He was the promised child. And it says that he began to search out those wells that his father had dug. And when he got it, he found those. It says that they had been filled with the earth. In other words, the enemy of our soul, if he has his way, he'll come in and try to steal those precious uh, giftedness. He'll try to steal the anointing. He'll try to steal that which God has uh, freely given to you and I. He'll begin to uh, show you that the world, uh, it looks better than, than God and the things of God. He'll begin to draw you away from the word of God. He'll begin to cause you to look at things of the world uh, and you'll be tempted to go and partake of that and drink from the wells of the world instead of the wells of God. So the Bible tells us to be alert, to, uh, to be awake, to watch and pray that we enter not into temptation, uh, that we uh, uh, stay before the Lord uh, until our strength is strong, that we can say no to sin and yes to God. So when God uh, called us out and brought us in, uh, you know, he didn't just call us out uh, to just barely give us enough authority to get by. Can you say amen? Praise the Lord. It talks about how, uh, uh, you know, the children of Israel, uh, they were delivered out uh, of Egyptian bondage. Uh, it says that Moses went in, God gave uh, Moses and God called him to go. And, you know, Moses went through a season where he says, you know, Lord, I can't even speak. And God's told him, he said, don't worry. He uh, says, I'm going to give you your brother. He's going to be your mouthpiece. And I'm going to give you a rod of authority. And I want you to go in and I want you to tell Pharaoh to let my people go. And the Bible says that after a process of time, uh, that there was after the <coughs> plagues uh, that had to be performed by the mighty hand of God, that after the uh, last plague where the Passover lamb uh, was killed and put up on the doorpost that represented the blood uh, uh, of the lamb, uh, and the power and the authority of God, it says that uh, uh, Pharaoh finally allowed the, the children of Israel to be released. Uh -huh. And it says that uh, as he uh, released them, it says that they began to wander in the wilderness. It says that they were being led by Moses uh, through the wilderness. And it says that everywhere that they, uh, uh, every step that they took, it said that Moses, uh, uh, as their leader, uh, when they got to the Red Sea, it says that Moses uh, lifted up his rod. You know, they wanted to turn around and go back into Egypt. Uh, they wanted to go back to where they came from. But God had a plan. God had a plan that they were to get to the promised land. Uh, so Moses uh, uh, began to lift his rod of authority, and the waters began to push back. And the Bible said that by that miraculous act that Moses performed, that they all walked uh, 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 on dry land uh, the, uh, across the, the Red Sea. The sea. Can you say amen? In other words, that uh, God uh, has a way of getting us where we need to be at the time we're supposed to be there. And, you know, because God is an old time God. The Bible also told us that when the children of Israel were delivered out of Egyptian bondage, that it actually was 11 days journey. They could have went by uh, the 11, it only took 11 days, but God chose to take them by the way of the wilderness. 
Uh, I believe that God was working something in them is the reason they had to go by the way of the wilderness. In other words, uh, uh, you know what? It, they began to get strengthened. Uh, they began to get uh, uh, put on their strength every time they see God's miraculous power uh, began to open up uh, to them. Uh, God not only parted the Red Sea for them, but he also made provision for them. He brought man out of heaven. They began to cry and murmur uh, to their leader and say, Lord, uh, uh, you know, why are, are you not going to be brought us out here to die? And God uh, told Moses, he says, I, 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 I'll make the provision plain. In other words, what I'm going to do is every morning when they get up, said they're going to go out of their uh, places there, and there's going to be manna provided. It's going to be laying up on the ground, and all they've got to do is go out and pick it up and take it into their house and the provision is going to be seen for that day. Can you say amen? And this was God's provision being seen. He provided that six days a week. Uh, the Bible says that that fresh manna came down every day. It was provided for them. It says that on the sixth day, he said, I'm going to provide double because I want to be able to carry it over unto the Sabbath. And then it started over again every week. That provision was made play unto his people. So God is a God who will take care of those that obey and follow him. Uh, we find out that then God went on and he, the provision was seen. Uh, the, uh, the water was supplied out of a rock uh, for them. Every, everything that they needed. God was bringing restoration to a people uh, who had been in bondage uh, uh, under the uh, uh, hard taskmaster named Pharaoh. God was he was bringing and the provision was being seen. Everything that they needed was being brought forth uh, by the mighty hand of God. And we know that all through the wilderness, God's hand was seen and it was upon them. I want to encourage you this evening that you've got to have faith to know that God's hand uh, is upon you right now. And because his hand is upon you, then his provision is going to be seen. It's going to be brought forth in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. So when God began to restore uh, uh, the children of Israel, he gave them everything that they needed. Uh, and we find out that all through that journey uh, through the wilderness, that God manifested a miracle after miracle. He showed himself plain uh, to the children of Israel uh, uh, until they uh, got to the place where they were to go in and possess the land. Uh, they failed, ended up failing God, and it says that they, because of their uh, uh, unbelief, because of their failure to go in, you know, it says that, uh, that they chose some spies to go in and spy out the land. And it says that uh, 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 the 10 came back. It says uh, uh, the 12 came back. And he said 10, 2 had a good report, uh, and the others had a bad report. It says the 2, Caleb and uh, 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 Joshua said, if we go in right now, uh, we can possess the land. You see, there's a timing that you've got to uh, uh, recognize with God. When God says, now is the time, you step in. That's when the waters part. Uh, when the timing's right, you do it right at that, uh, that uh, uh, time. And when you do that, you're going to see the miraculous power of God be manifested upon the earth. Can you say amen? It says, but because of their disobedience and their failure to obey, they came back. It says those came, that with a bad report came back and said, you know what? There are uh, giants in the land. Uh, there's fortified walls there. So we can't do this thing. You see, they were in their own righteousness, not God's righteousness. If they had faith to believe that they were in God's righteousness, they were went forward in faith, knowing that God was well able uh, to give them the victory had they stepped out and moved in at the time that God was calling them forward. So it tells us that because of their disobedience that they stayed and wandered in the wilderness. After that, it says that many of them died in the wilderness. It says that but their children went in and was able to take what had been promised unto them. Lord, help us not to fail God from going in, uh, moving on into the very fullness that God has for us, not to stay on the bank, not to be comfortable just as a uh, uh, 
observer of what God is doing. Uh, but help us get off the bank into the waters. The Bible tells us that uh, if we stay on the bank, that we're just uh, barely saved. Can you say amen? But when we get out into the waters, if we step out, it tells us in Ezekiel about having to get off of the bank, uh, uh, you know, to get a knee deep, uh, uh, ankle deep, and then knee deep, and then uh, on, uh, getting into waters over our head where we can swim in. If we'll release ourselves to an almighty God, to a holy God, uh, if we'll uh, uh, allow God to deal with our sins and our iniquities, uh, allow him to die, deal with our opinions and our uh, uh, false uh, uh, religions and everything that's hindering us, uh, our form of godliness, uh, uh, our, our state of just being complacent and uh, uh, you know, just being uh, uh, lukewarm, if we we'll allow him to deal with all of that and dig deep in it, us, that we get off of the bank and get into the waters that we can swim in. And the Bible tells us that once we get out into those waters, uh, we'll begin to see healings and deliverances and uh, people, uh, uh, they're, they're being set free by the power of God uh, because uh, we're yielding over, uh, the Bible says, get a uh, good receive salvation, uh, get on in into the waters uh, that are over our head, that we'll begin to see the manifest power and the glory of God being released upon the earth. Can you say amen? The Bible tells us that, uh, 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 that we have to surrender and yield uh, uh, to God. As we do that, uh, 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 we we're trusting that he will lead and guide us, that he will direct our uh, paths, uh, those wells that have been preserved, it says that Isaac went back and he began to redig the wells. Uh, and those wells of living water uh, began to burst forth. Uh, and you see that water uh, uh, of Abraham, because Abraham was a man called of God. Uh, it says that he left his uh, family, uh, he left his homeland, and he stepped out and obeyed the word of the Lord. And the Bible told, uh, gave uh, Abraham a promise. He says, I'm going to bless you, and I'm going to bless your seed uh, as is uh, uh, as great as the uh, 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 sand upon the sea and as, as the stars in the sky. And the Lord, there's no limit if you obey me to the lineage uh, and the inheritance that's going to be passed down to your generation. Can you say amen? But it's a, there's a requirement that's laid up on that. Uh, uh, God told Abraham, he says, you've got to obey what I tell you to do. If we don't obey the Lord, there's nothing that we're going to be able to pass down to a generation who is in need of a holy God. Uh, we've got to get off the bank and get into the waters and let the manifest power of God not only be told but seen and revealed unto those that are coming behind us. Can you say amen? They've got to know that this thing is a real thing. That the manifest power of God, uh, that the Bible says he will not withhold any good thing from those that love him if we'll yield over to the power and the anointing and the authority of Almighty God. But we've got to get off the bank. So these, these uh, wells were redone. <clears throat> the Bible says that uh, Isaac recognized uh, that his uh, father Abraham had an anointing upon him, uh, that there was something special about that, so he went and redug the wells. Hallelujah. Redug the wells. I'm going to tell you, church, we need to redug dig some wells. Though, you know, uh, sometimes uh, we, we think, uh, and God help me here, uh, but we got to get it to the next generation to know that uh, uh, this new faith Dable kind of uh, 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 thing that's coming in the church today is not going to suffice us in the day and time that we're living. There's no new thing. Uh, all we got to do is go back and redig the wells because it's through those wells comes the power of the Lord and the authority of God. And we get and tap into those, we're going to recognize there's going to be something within us that, has, that we know that the power of God is there and to do great and mighty things. Uh, but this new stuff that we tend to fall for, this new modern stuff, this modern age, and all this stuff that has nothing to do with God's anointing and the power of God. Uh, you say God's already made the path straight. He's already 
uh, you know, the Bible tells us in uh, of Luke, I believe it says, uh, straight and narrow is the way that leads them to eternal life. Uh, he says, but broad and wide is the way uh, uh, that, that, you know, you can just do anything you want to be saved. If, you, if you, that's what, uh, but the thing is, you're going to go to a devil's hell if you convince yourself and you allow this new modern stuff uh, that's coming uh, into the churches today to dictate you how, to you how you live your life. The Bible says it's straight and narrow, uh, and few be there that find it. In other words, you've got to have, know that uh, this, this narrow path has already been etched out for us. It's already been dug out. It's already, uh, the way's already been made. We just got to stay before the long Lord long enough that God begins to remove the scales from our eyes, that we begin a revelation of what is real and what is false. We don't need false doctrine in, uh, in the uh, uh, church today. We need something that's going to stand the test of time. Can you say amen? And it talks about uh, uh, the children of Israel, of course, as I was mentioning them, uh, the reason I didn't bring that up is the fact that, uh, you know, when they came out, uh, they uh, were like we are a lot of times, uh, they were still on the bank. Uh, they, they were still, uh, had not gotten off the bank to realize they were serving a holy God. They were, they were uh, still, and any time anything didn't go their way, uh, they wanted to turn back and go back uh, to Egypt uh, to the point that even Moses himself, had it not been for Moses who was leading them, uh, uh, God was going to destroy them all. But because Moses went before them and Moses says, Lord, if you destroy them, you're going to have to destroy me first. And God knew he could not destroy his chosen. His chosen was Moses. And so because of the authority that was laid upon the shoulders of Moses, uh, because of his walk, because of his call, uh, he interceded. He stood between uh, God and the people. And, and the Bible says that it was not until after Moses died uh, that uh, uh, Joshua began to step in and, and he began to lead the children of Israel. It was after that that the reproach of Egypt was laid off of the children of Israel. You see, we've got to lay uh, the reproach off of us. Uh, we got to get out of the, uh, off the bank into the waters and lay the reproach of the world, the reproach of sin, the reproach of iniquities off of us so that we can walk in the newness of life. Uh, uh, you know, we've got to get out where uh, the purity of the spirit of the living God is flowing and God will cleanse us and wash us and purify us and make us whole. Can you say that? The mind, soul, and spirit. You see, he doesn't do a halfway job. He does a complete work within us. He begins to deal with our heart. And as our heart uh, begins to be transformed and as our mind begins to get uh, uh, renewed by the word of God, uh, it begins to do a, a thing within our uh, uh, whole body, uh, your mind, soul, and spirit. Our mind is transformed. Our heart has been changed. Uh, God has given us a new heart, and we begin, healing begins to come forth because our life is getting in alignment with the Holy God. So as we, God begins his work within us, the more we uh, uh, surrender and yield to his working, the more the benefits of God are going to be manifest and come forth in our life. Can you say amen? The Bible tells us that uh, the wells uh, uh, the, were polluted. Uh, Abraham, when Isaac went and he began to search out uh, the wells that his father had dug, it says the Philistines had filled the wells to pollute, clog, and render them useless. You see, that's what the devil wants to do to us. He wants to try to clog us up. He wants to try to stop us. He wants to try to uh, pollute us and render us useful for the, uh, 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 for the body of Christ. But that's the reason we've got to fight the fight of faith. We've got to stand against the enemy of our soul. We've got to keep the well of living water flowing in our lives. Life. Can you say man? It says that, uh, in other words, he wanted to stop it from passing from one generation to another. He wanted to, uh, you know, let us just worry about me, myself, and I. We're not going to worry about what's coming behind us. As long as I make it, that's all I'm concerned about. And I'm going to tell you, that's a selfish way to think because we need to be concerned about those that are coming behind us. I don't know about you, uh, 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 but and I'm sure every mother that's under the sound of my voice and every father would lay their life down for their child. Uh, well, 
this is one way that we can do that. Uh, we can lay our lives down for the gospel uh, and, and for the uh, calling that's been laid upon our life. And when we do that, as we yield to the Father, uh, God's Spirit will not only stop with us, our overflow will go to those that are coming behind us. Can you say amen? Praise the Lord. It says their hatred, talking about the Philistines' hatred uh, for God and his people was so high that they were willing to murder them by uh, shutting off the water that supplied that society that needed it to thrive. Uh, <clears throat> in other words, they were filling up those uh, wells uh, that were producing that fresh water, uh, you know, that would bring forth life uh, to a nation, uh, to a people, and to a church. Uh, we need to make sure that the uh, wells of living water are flowing freely, that everyone under the sound of our voice uh, can drink from that well, uh, that they will be able to sup. It won't be polluted water. Uh, it won't be uh, 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 clogged up, but it'll have the freedom uh, uh, to uh, have its way in the body of Christ, uh, that the life of God can be brought forth and in men and women's lives so that their lives can be changed uh, for the glory of God. Well, wells represent life, prosperity. It's also referred to as a place where water issues out. You know, and that reminds me of, of where it talks about a revelation where it says there's a river that's flowing. Uh, if we get underneath that river, uh, we're going to be uh, healed. We're going to be blessed. We're going to be delivered. We're going to be set free. We're going to be saved. Uh, anything that we have, if we get underneath that in that river, uh, uh, we're going to be able to receive it. Can you say amen? The Bible talks about that. Uh, about the uh, uh, talking about the waste places. <clears throat> Uh, we are restorer of those waste places. It says, and they that shall be of these shall build the old waste places. Uh, you know, we've got to go back and uh, 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 speak life and uh, uh, touch those that have fallen into uh, 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 error, those that have gotten hung up and, uh, uh, you know, and, and, and bring them back uh, to uh, the, the, the place of rest and comfort in God. You know, uh, like Psalm uh, 23 says, uh, uh, he prepares the table before us, uh, uh, before our enemies. In other words, he's going to feed us as long as we, uh, uh, as the body of Christ, we go and we need to be reaching out to those that have fallen and gotten entrapped. And, you know, it talks about the shepherd and his sheep and how one of those uh, you know, he, he, he's talking about his fold, uh, those that are in his fold and how he watches over them and keeps an eye up on them and uh, makes sure that they're uh, all uh, okay at, at any given time. Uh, but, you know, you've always got that one, that rebellious one that'll get out and leave the fold and get out there and thinks he can do it on his own. Uh, you know, and, uh, and sometimes you've got more than one that'll do that, but he'll get out there. He thinks he can make it on his own, and he gets entangled. Uh, you know, and the wolves come, and they begin to devour him and, and, and inflict him and wound him. And uh, that shepherd, because of the love of the shepherd, will leave those 99 that seem to be doing okay. And he'll go out there, and he'll find that one, and he will uh, get it unwrapped and uh, that's tangled up in that uh, a fence and uh, that barbed wire fence and has inflicted pain and suffering upon him and uh, get him away from that uh, where that wolf has come in and devoured him and bring him back uh, to the uh, sheepfold and, and pour in the oil and the wine uh, and, and so healing can be brought forth. And then you've got those that will go out there and continue to try to run. Uh, they're rebellious and uh, you go out there and the shepherd, because of his great love, he will go out and he will find that one. And sometimes, I'm going to tell you, church, uh, uh, the shepherd will have to get his rod of correction and he will break, the shepherd himself will break the, the leg of that sheep. Uh, and you may think, oh, that's cruel. How could he do that? But you know what? He's trying to get him to wake up. Uh, to realize, uh, you know, it's time for you to get back in proper order. It's time to you, for you to get back within the fold. He'll break that leg, uh, and he'll pick that sheep up, and he'll throw, put it on his shoulders. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. He'll put him on his shoulder and he carries him back to the fold. Then when he gets him into the fold, he begins to pour in the oil and the wine so the healing can be brought forth. I'm going to tell you, the shepherd cares about his sheep. He is concerned about you. Uh, he uh, wants to make sure that your provision is being seen. He wants to make sure that restoration is being brought down to you, that you're restored in proper place uh, with him. Uh, can you say man? So God is a shepherd that will go back into the waste places and bring us out. He's a shepherd that will uh, uh, bind up the wounds, uh, uh, pour the oil in the wine. Uh, he will uh, lick our, uh, the Lord will soothe us and keep us uh, in, in peace if we will uh, stay within the boundaries of the Word of God. If we override that and get out and do things we shouldn't do, uh, uh, guess what's going to happen? The very same thing that happened to Adam and Eve. Uh, you know, God uh, had to bring a swift punishment upon them. Uh, we better be thankful today that we're not living under the covenant of old where uh, grace uh, as we're living today is being poured out upon you and I. We are, out, are serving God of not only the first chance or the second chance or the third chance, but the fourth chance. Uh, he's a God, uh, if we'll come back to him, will has open arms for you and I to be received unto him. Can you say amen? But swift punishment was bring to Adam and Eve. Uh, that punishment was that they were uh, put out of the garden. Uh, you know, it says that the God put cherubs or angels there at the beginning so they could come back and not uh, be a participant of the Garden of Eden any longer. They lost out uh, of that uh, 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 great privilege that had been given unto them. And because of their fall is the reason today that we have to have the Redeemer, uh, as Jesus, known as Jesus Christ, our Savior, to come back and redeem us and put us back in, in a right relationship with Him. The Bible talks about uh, that, uh, uh, talking about a breach, it says that thou shalt be called the repairs of the breach. Uh, you know, we're going to be called not only, uh, uh, to, we're not only called to raise up the old waste places, uh, uh, but we're to be called to repair the bridge. Now, we know that Jesus Christ himself is the one who does this, but he uses you and I as we obey the word of the Lord. Uh, Jesus is the repair of the breach. In other words, he puts back together those things that have been torn apart. Our lives, uh, when we come to him, uh, we're lost and undone without a holy God. And as we surrender and yield to him, uh, he is the one who restores us. He's the one who brings the breath of life into us. He's the one who raises us up to sit in heavenly places with him. He is that repair of the breach. The Bible tells us that a breach is an act of, of are a result of breaking a rupture, a gap made in a wall. And we know we can go even to Nehemiah where it talks about Nehemiah. It says that uh, in 1 verse 3, it says, they shall, And they said unto me, The remnant that are left in captivity there at the prophets are in great affliction and reproach. A reproach means a disagree, disgrace, a discredit. Are blamed. The wall of Jerusalem also is broken down, and uh, the gate thereof uh, is burned with fire. In other words, Nehemiah began to recognize that great devastation had come upon uh, uh, the country there, the Jew of Jerusalem. It says that Nehemiah began to pray, and it says, and It came to pass when I heard these words that I sat down and I wept. And Lord, a certain days and fasted and prayed before the Lord of heaven. Uh, and it says that he was uh, uh, burdened uh, for the walls uh, uh, and the gates uh, to be uh, put back up. Can you say man? Uh, you know, when we look out upon this world and we look upon in our communities and our homes, uh, uh, let's just stop right there for a minute, where our homes have seen such great devastation and affliction, where we've seen the enemy come in and tear up marriages, uh, you know, to take our children, uh, uh, destroy our minds, uh, uh, where he's come in and uh, uh, took the victory that's been freely been given to us by Jesus Christ. There's great devastation that's been uh, uh, come upon God's people. Uh, uh, that don't even include if we look out upon the world and see the devastation that right now as I speak is taking place. Well, Nehemiah began to 
weep before the Lord. Uh, because the burden began to fall upon him to repair, go and, uh, to go back and uh, build the walls and the gates and put back in order those things that the enemy uh, had torn apart. It says that you know when the enemy comes in, uh, you know he won't stop and just destroy you, but he will take those holy things that God has given you and he'll carry them out and he will use them and put them in a place of commonness of, of which uh, is a reproach unto God because those things that God has called holy we cannot take and use them as common. Can you say that? Uh, when we lose our vision, when we use our sight, when we begin to get our eyes off of God, when we begin to not recognize that God is holy and that he is lifted up and that those things that God places within uh, 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 the church or within the uh, 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 temple or within the tabernacle those things are holy unto God. You can't take those things and use them as common. It says that you, you can put them among your own stuff and try to make them common. Uh, that means we have a disrespect for the house of God and for the things of God. And that's definitely something that needs to be brought back into the body. Uh, each and every one of us need to be quickened by the Spirit to realize that God is a holy God. And that only He, uh, those things that are holy, need to be revered uh, and, 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 and looked at as they that belong to God. And you treat things that belong to God different than you do that which is common. Can you say amen? Praise the Lord. Uh, so he began to pray and he began to fast uh, uh, for, uh, before the Lord. And God gave him this burden. And it says that he was granted permission to restore the walls uh, and the gates there. And it says he did it in a a miraculous time of 52 days. And it says that when they were re-erected re and they were put back, it says that all those holy things that had been taken and carried into the hands of the enemy, and the land of the enemy was brought back into its proper place. Can you say man? You see, once we turn to God, once we surrender to God, once we get things right, God will get things right with God, he will restore those things wholly unto us. He'll begin to bring back uh, that reverence of who God is. Uh, we'll, we'll not only begin to uh, look at God as high and lifted up uh, and, and hold him in reverence and have a godly fear uh, for him. Uh, 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 and it's a fear to know that if we do not obey the Lord, that God could cut us off at any time. Uh, 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 in other words, he is a God uh, uh, that holds uh, uh, the... the uh, word in his mouth and he will you know he can he can do what he chooses in other words he can cut us off if we don't obey the word of the Lord but uh, as I was saying earlier about Adam and Eve they they, they got out of the, they were put out of the garden thank goodness we're living under grace today so if we happen to fail God or we uh, uh, do things that we shouldn't do knowingly or, or not knowingly whether it's sins of omission or sins of commission uh, uh, you know the Bible says sins of commission are sins that uh, you know we, uh, we, we've been told to leave alone to stay away from uh, to separate ourselves unto God and not touch those things that we know that could draw us out into the world that cause us to sin or fall back into sin we know that we're not to override that. But those sins of omission are things like the things that we know to do and that we don't do. Uh, God's going to hold us accountable for those. That's part of that narrow path that we have to get on. That if we know to do something and we don't do it, if we continually put God off, if we continue to say, I'll do it later, uh, you know, uh, we can no longer do that because God is uh, right now God and he's called us to do it now. We need to step up to the plate and do what God is called us to do or we're going to be held accountable for that very thing so God is calling us forward to do and fulfill that which he's put in our heart to do he'll set us up in other words we're not going on our own uh, we're going to the power that he has uh, put within us uh, that, that quickening spirit he's, he, he anoints us to do what he uh, has called us to do we can look back over time we can see where God through the ages of time that God, uh, his restoration was made plain uh, under the old covenant. We see uh, in uh, Ruth where Ruth was a woman who was a Moabite, uh, her, her husband and her, her two sons. Uh, uh, there was a famine in the land and it says that uh, they uh, decided to move from uh, Bethlehem, Judah and go into 
uh, 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 Moab. And it says that they, uh, she was not a Moab, she was from Bethlehem, Judah, but they went to Moab. Moab. And it says that uh, while she was there, that her husband died. Uh, and that her uh, 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 two sons uh, had buried, had taken wives, and it says her two sons died. And it says that she became bitter. Uh, it says that uh, uh, that uh, in Ruth, it talks about that uh, she, it says that after she lost her two husbands and, and lost her two sons, that uh, she began to get word that there was a harvest time uh, in her whole land of Bethlehem, Judah. And she was going back there uh, uh, to uh, uh, try to uh, uh, get within the harvest time and uh, reap the benefits of the harvest and uh, it says that she had lost everything there in uh, Bethlehem, Judah. I mean, in Moab. She lost everything in Moab. And it says, and, and it says that she had become very bitter. It says, and, and uh, uh, Naomi. It says, it says she said unto them, "Call me not Naomi." Uh, it says that Naomi and her husband and her two boys uh, were the ones that left uh, Bethlehem, Judah. Uh, and, and went to Moab. It says that she lost those two, uh, lost her family, and that she became very bitter. It says that, uh, and she said to them, Call me not Naomi, call me Mara, for the Almighty had dealt uh, very bitterly with me. It says, And I went out full. In other words, when she left her homeland, she went out full. She had her husband, and she had her two sons. It says, And the Lord hath brought me home empty. Why then call ye me Naomi? See, the Lord hath tested, testified against me, and the Almighty hath afflicted me. So Naomi returned, and Ruth the Moabitess, her daughter-in-law, with her, which returned out of the country of Moab, and they came to Bethlehem in the beginning of the barley season. You see, God is a restorer. I want to just remind us of that. Even though uh, uh, Naomi lost her husband and she lost her two sons, it says that they had taken her wives, and she tried to get her wife, the wives of her sons, her daughter-in-laws, to go back to their homelands. But there was one named Ruth that says, no, I see something in you, uh, Naomi. I see your loyalty, loyalty to your God. It says, I'm going to follow you wherever you go, I'm going to go. That, now, that's a great testimony uh, for Naomi. You know, God help us that our testimony would be that God sees something in us that they want to follow. Can you say amen? And so it says that Ruth chose to go back uh, to Bethlehem, Judah, with Naomi. It says when we got, they got there, it was the uh, height of the harvest time. It says uh, Ruth went out to the fields and began uh, to uh, harvest and bring in the barley and bring in the harvest uh, to Naomi to, so that the provision could be made and seen. It says that there was a man out there named Boaz, and he began to take notice of her, take notice of Ruth, because she would come out every day, and he began to notice that she was taking care of her mother-in-law. And so, so the, it says that a Boaz purposely left the four corners of the field for they, uh, for Ruth to get to have every afternoon when she went home, she would gather that uh, the four corners. Uh, 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 because of, of what Boaz seen in her. A uh, little did he know that a few chapters are down, and if you've got time this week, uh, it would be a blessing for you to open your book to Ruth and read that whole chapter about how God took a woman and her family uh, out of uh, their homeland and how he took them to a place, and, and she ended up losing her family and came back how God uh, turned that thing around and brought her. It says that uh, Boaz took notice of Ruth and began to... Uh, show her favor, and because of that, uh, uh, it ended up, uh, it, the Bible tells us, and I want you to read it for yourself, but it says that God intervened. It says that because of that, that it says that Ruth ended up uh, uh, marrying uh, Boaz, and it says that in uh, Ruth 4, 13 uh, through uh, 13 through 17, it says, uh, So Boaz took Ruth, and she was his wife. And when he went into her, the Lord gave her conception, and she bare a son. 
And the women said unto Naomi, Blessed be the Lord, which hath not left thee this day without a kinsman, that his name may be famous in Israel. And he shall be unto thee a restorer of thy life and a nourisher of thine own age. For thy daughter-in-law, which loveth thee, which is better than to, to thee, which is better to, to thee than seven sons hath borne him. And Naomi took the child and laid it in her bosom and became nurse unto it. So you see what happened here. It says that he, uh, uh, they, they, they married and, and a child was born. Now I want you to listen to this. It says, that, and it says, and, uh, it says, now these are the generation, and it says in verse 17, it says, and the women, her neighbors gave it a name, saying that there is a son born to Naomi, and they called his name Obed. He is the father of Jesse, uh, the father of David. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So we find out through that, a lot of times when we see devastation, and we see affliction, and we see uh, uh, things come in upon us, uh, uh, we can even look at this uh, thing that we're going through, uh, that we're all having to participate in, in this nation. We're having to participate in it, whether we want to or not, about this disease that's come up on the land. Uh, but in this particular case, when we, uh, in the case of uh, Naomi and Ruth, uh, uh, there was great devastation. It says she had became bitter, uh, even to the point that, uh, you know, she lost her joy. Uh, bitterness is a hard thing. Uh, uh, you know, we've got to uh, not allow these things to set in on us that we, uh, you know, stay before the Lord and cultivate our relationship with Him uh, so the joy of the Lord can burst forth out of our life. Uh, I know it's hard to be joyful when things are not going right, uh, when we're losing things, when devastation is in our homes, our families, our nation, uh, but we've got to realize that all the Bible tells us that the joy of the Lord is our strength, uh, uh, you know, and if we, uh, it says that, uh, morning may endure for the night, but joy cometh in the morning. So it talks about how that, uh, but through this lineage, uh, that, that because of all this that transpired, uh, that God orchestrated this, that uh, Ruth would uh, marry a uh, Boaz, and through that lineage, uh, there was Oban that was born, and then there was Jesse, and then there was David, and through that lineage was the birth of Christ. We know that Christ, Jesus Christ himself, was born through the lineage of, uh, uh, of this uh, union of Ruth and uh, Boaz. Uh, so you see, God's always got a plan. He can always turn it around. He can always uh, make uh, uh, you know what looks for evil and turn it for good. Uh, so we got to realize that God is in control. He is a restorer. When things look bad, uh, you know, when, when we've gone as far as we can go, God says, you know what, that's enough, and he'll push back the enemy. Sometimes when we're too weak in our own self to fight, God himself will step out in. I want to share this with you. It's a personal testimony of mine, but several years ago, while we, my husband and I were pastoring in Arcadia, uh, you know, I, I used to suffer. I was standing in faith for my healing uh, for asthma, and I had several, uh, several bad, serious attacks with asthma, and during that time, it seemed like the enemy was battling me more than uh, usual, and uh, it seemed like every three months, I was ended up in the emergency room, and uh, having to get medicated, and uh, a lot of times it would help, and most of the time it would uh, after a few days, but I remember this time, one time in particular, I went uh, to the emergency room that I'd been treated, and I seemed like I couldn't get any relief, and I remember I went home, and I was laying in my bed, and as I lay in my bed, I just cried out to God, because I said, God, I, I can't take it more, I can't breathe, uh, you know, I, I mean, I was just a mess. I was just a mess. My mind was telling me, the devil was telling me, you're not going to make it. I, every breath I took, I thought was the last breath. And just out of the blue, uh, the Lord began to, uh, I, I began to see the hand of God. I seen it come down, and it, it just got come down like this, and then pushed back the enemy. And what the devil said, what the Lord said to me, says, devil, that's enough. This is my child. And he pushed back the enemy. And, and I began, I remember I got up off that bed and I said, oh my God, Lord, thank you, Jesus, because uh, you know what it did? It showed me. It seemed like the, through all the suffering and everything that I had been through, uh, I, I thought I had to endure. I thought I just had to wait it out. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to tell you, there are going to come times 
with the Lord himself, when we are not strong enough within ourselves, he will step in himself like he did. He stepped in and he said, this is my child. Uh, and you've got to back up. You see, he, the, that that he did for me, he's well able to do for you. He's not going to allow more to come upon you than you're able to bear. He will get you through to the other side, whether we have to endure or whether God himself will part the heavens and come down and say, fight our fight for us. You know, David, when he went out to face the giant, the Lord told him, he says, this battle's not yours, this is my battle. Uh, we got to trust God. We got to uh, realize that God, we belong to God. Uh, and, and because we belong to him, he's not going to allow us to suffer more than we're able to bear. He will come in and he will make a way. And I thank him today. I thank him because uh, uh, the experiences that he showed me over the years that I have served him, uh, he's, he showed me that I can put my confidence and my faith in him. Uh, because he loves me. I have no, not a shadow of a doubt that God loves me. And that if something gets too severe or too hard for me, if it needs me, God himself will, uh, will move in on my behalf. Uh, you know, he's given us the authority. He's given us the keys. Uh, and, but, uh, you know, there's times when we can't do that. And if we get to that place, that's where his grace will come in. That's where he himself will step in himself and not allow us to be overcome by an enemy that wants to uh, depress us and oppress us us and steal our joy and keep us from moving forward in faith. You've got to have faith to know that if he'll do it for one, he'll do it for any of us. Can you say amen? That's what's so good about the Word of God because there are so many victories that's been won out uh, and it's been dug out in the Word of God. And I'm going to tell you, if he did it for Abraham, if he did it for uh, Isaac, if he did it for uh, the men of old, he will do it for us today because the Bible tells us that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. It's not him that's changing. God says, I change not. It's us that will change. Our faith will get low. Our belief system will be challenged by this world, by the things coming up on the world. But God is a God who will make a way out of a... a when, when there seems to be no way. If we'll trust him, he will show us that straight way, that narrow way, that holy way that brings uh, us to a, a, a knowledge to know that there's nothing impossible with a holy God. Praise the Lord. Another thing, another one in the Bible talks about restoration and how God only allowed it to go for so long was Job. Job was one, the Bible says that the enemy, uh, the, the devil went before the Lord and told him, says, uh, have, uh, let me turn to Job. Uh, Job chapter 1, uh, 6 through 12, it talks about, it says, Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. Satan came also among them, the Lord said unto Satan, a whence comest thou? Uh, then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, uh, that there is none like him in all the earth, a, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil? And, and then Satan answered the Lord and said, uh, Doth Job fear God for everything, for naught? Uh, and, and, and hast thou made a, a hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? Uh, thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. But put forth thine hand now and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee unto thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath in his power only upon himself put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. And we know how Job endured and how he fought the fight of faith and how he uh, lost, uh, how the enemy was loud, how the devil came and took uh, from Job. And, uh, you know, thank the Lord that Job did not have his confidence or his faith uh, in, in what he possessed, but he had it uh, in Almighty God. It says that, uh, he lost his children. Uh, it says that he, uh, his friends turned against him. It says that he uh, uh, was broken out with boils from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. It says that uh, 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 Job was such an upright man that uh, it says that he would offer up sacrifices uh, to the Lord just in case that his children sinned. Can you say amen? In other words, he was being tested uh, uh, to see where his trust and his faith, uh, 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 what, it, what it was like, it wasn't in what he 
uh, possessed or was it upon an almighty God? It says because he stood the test of time. It says that his own wife told him, says, why don't you just curse God and die? Uh, but it says that he says, oh, foolish woman, I'm going to tell you something. Uh, and everybody that we know may try to tell us to turn our back on God or may try to cause us to go away that's not pleasing unto God. But I'm telling you, uh, you better choose this day who you're going to serve. You've got to choose the right path. You've got to get on that straight and narrow. You've got to keep your faith in God to know that God is a restorer. He will keep that which we've committed unto him against that day. If we'll hold fast to him and the power of his might. Uh, there's nothing, Lord, that you're going to keep from us to know that we'll be continue to move forward in faith to accomplish the will and the purpose that you've laid out for us. I'm thankful here this evening that uh, God had a plan from the beginning, uh, that he knew that when the time came uh, that, that he was going to send his son uh, to die on, uh, on Calvary for you and I. And because of what he did, uh, you and I have victory today. Uh, we, uh, if we've accepted him by faith, if we come to him and ask for forgiveness, if we repent it, if we're now born again children of God, uh, we now have access to the throne of Almighty God. Uh, that we can press in. Uh, uh, we can get off out of the uh, outer court into the uh, 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 Holy of Holies and get on in till God will part the veil when we get into the Holy of Holies and really and have access uh, to a holy God. And you know it tells us of the Old Covenant about the tabernacle and how in the holies of holies is where the very presence of God would dwell. It talks about under the Holy of Holies. In the Holy of Holies, that's where the Ark of the Covenant was placed. And it says that the two cherubims would sit upon the Ark of the Covenant. It said that uh, inside that covenant uh, uh, was uh, the Ten Commandments uh, was placed within the covenant. Uh, that the Aaron's rod that budded. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Aaron's rod that budded. And it talked about uh, the uh, uh, manna, a piece of the manna, the provision. That heavenly manna was placed in there where the very life of God uh, was. And it tells you, when you get pressed back get beyond uh, the, the veil, the altar of incense, and press on in to the Holy of Holies, that God's presence will be released from heaven for you and I. You see, we've got to get out of the uh, outer court. We've got to get even beyond the holy place where the a table of showbread, uh, the a lighting candlestick, all this uh, presides. Uh, get past the brazen altar, the outer court, and get past the holy place and press on into the Holy of Holies where God's very presence uh, uh, abides. And when we get there, we're, we're going to get to see the glory of God being manifested uh, to uh, his people. Uh, that's where we're going to see the miracles. We're going to see the hand of God move like, like we've not seen before. We're going to get to see the revelation of God being real. God's going to part the veil to us and we begin to get a new vision of Christ. We begin to recognize how great he is and that his authority and his power is going to have to reign here on earth. Can you say man hallelujah it talks about job and how god restored him it says in uh, job chapter 40 uh, 42 uh, that he was because he stood the test because he stood strong because he didn't compromise because he held the standard of god uh, because he upheld it he refused to bow he refused to curse god it says that in, in, in uh, job uh, chapter uh, uh, 42, uh, verse uh, 12 through thir and 13, it said, The Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning. Can you say that? For he had 14,000 sheep and 6,000 camels, 1,000 yoke of oxen, and 1,000 she has asses. And he had also seven sons and three daughters. In other words, God blessed him double. He gave him back everything. You say, God's favor will be upon you if you'll stand strong, if you'll hold to faith, if you'll uh, wait upon the Lord, if you'll move in the power of his uh, uh, anointing. Instead of getting out ahead of God, so many of us have tried to lead the Lord. And God said, you know what? You're going to have to get my plan. I I'm not following your plan. Uh, you got to get in alignment with me. And then there's so many of us that are falling too far behind. Uh, you know, we're not walking in step with God. And when we're not in step with God, we're going to miss out on what God has for us. We're going to miss out on the flow that comes uh, by getting in the river. Uh, you know, we just get the overflow. We, we, you know, we're not carrying, you know, we're not uh, assembling ourselves 
uh, in, 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 in proper order to God. We've got to uh, uh, make sure that our, we're uh, uh, face to face, uh, uh, that we're yielding unto Him. Can you say amen? I know there are portions of scripture that talks about uh, uh, restoration. Is uh, talks about in 2 Samuel chapter 9. It talked about how Mephibosheth, uh, uh, it, first of all, it talked about David and how Jonathan, uh, the son of Saul, had come in covenant uh, together. It said they had made a covenant with one another. And it says because of that covenant, uh, that they said that they would take care of one another, that they would show kindness one to another. Well, I would encourage you today to show kindness to your brothers and sisters in the Lord. I would encourage you this evening that you show some kind of kindness. God has been kind to us. God, we are in covenant with God, with the Holy God. We made covenant with Him. And because of that, I want to encourage you to show kindness to someone that's uh, within the body. Not only in the body, those that are out of the body. We need to be that light that's set up on a hill that cannot be hid. We need to show forth the praises of Him who called us out of darkness into His marvelous light. So it tells us in 1 Samuel chapter 18, uh, 1 through 4, it says it came to pass when uh, he had made an end of speaking unto Saul that the soul of Jonathan uh, was knit with the soul of David. And Jonathan loved him as his own soul. In other words, they came in covenant. They were bound together. It says that Saul took him that day and, and would let him go no more home to his father's house. Then Jonathan and David made a covenant because he loved him as his own soul. And Jonathan stripped himself of the robe that was upon him and gave it to David and his garments, even uh, to his sword and to his bow and to his girdle. So that day they came in covenant uh, with, uh, with each other that they would take care of each other. Now we can look over through the covenant, uh, through the uh, word of God, and we find out that God it is a covenant God. He made covenant with Abraham. Uh, we know that he has made covenant. Uh, we, we find his name when he spoke to Abraham. He told, uh, and Abraham says, uh, uh, he told Abraham, I said, I want you to go and uh, be the one to go and tell Pharaoh to let my people go. And Abraham says, I, who am I going to say sent me? He said, you say that I am, that I am has sent you. In other words, God is a covenant God. He says, I am Jehovah Jireh. I'm El Shaddai. I'm El Elyon. I'm Jehovah Rapha. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm uh, uh, Emmanuel. I'm a God of righteousness. Uh, uh, you know, uh, all of these, uh, he's a covenant God. And so uh, they had made covenant one with another. That means that you honor. We can look at our uh, relationships that we have today. Uh, with our, We come in covenant with our uh, 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 mates when we marry. Uh, we make a covenant that, that we'll forsake all others and we'll join into that one. That covenant means that we forsake all others uh, when we uh, come to Jesus. We forsake everything else and come to the Lord. We're joined with Him. We make a covenant with God. And that means because of that, uh, we're in covenant with God and we've forsaken all our idols and those things that have kept us from surrendering to God. We've got to push that and separate ourselves unto God. Uh, when we do that, uh, God, uh, we're in covenant with Him. And because of that, He honors His covenant, even at times when we don't honor ours. He will take care of us. But God will take care of us because of that covenant that we have. So in 2 Samuel chapter 9, one verse with the seven, it says that David said he went seeking out after Jonathan's death. Jonathan and Saul were both killed in battle. And it says a uh, God, it says that David did not forget the covenant that he had with Jonathan. So it says that he went searching out his uh, 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 children uh, to bless them. It says, uh, you know, I'm going to go find out what happened to Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth was a son of David. And he says, I'm going to go find him and I'm going to go show kindness unto him because I'm going to honor the covenant that I made with his father. Can you say amen? It says that David said, he went to the house of Ziba. It says, it says, it said, is there yet any left of the house of Saul that I may show him kindness uh, not for my sake, but for Jonathan's sake, because of the covenant. It says that there was in the house of Saul a servant whose name was Ziba. And when they had called him unto David, the king said unto him, Art thou Ziba? And he said, Thy servant is he. And the king said, Is there any not yet any of the house of Saul that I may show the kindness of God unto him? 
And Ziba said unto the king, Jonathan hath yet a son which is lame in his feet. And the king said unto him, where is he? And I don't know if you remember, it tells us in the scriptures that uh, the nurse that was taking care of uh, Mephibosheth dropped him uh, when they were in battle. And it says that his feet uh, got uh, messed up. It says that he, he was lame in his feet because of her dropping him. It says that Ziba said unto the king, behold, he's in the house of Makar, the son of Abiel, in Lodabar. It says, then King David sent and fetched him out of the house of Bacher, the son of Abios, from Lodabar. And when Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, was come unto David, it says he fell on his face and did reverence. It says, and David said, Mephibosheth, and he answered, Behold thy servant. And David said to him, Fear not, for I will surely show thee kindness for Jonathan, thy father's sake. And will restore thee all the land of Saul, thy father, and thou shalt eat bread at my table continually. Praise the Lord. And it says that Mephibosheth bowed himself and said, What is thy servant that thou shalt look upon such a dead dog as I am? And the king called to Ziba and, and, and the servant and said unto him, I have given unto thy master's son all that pertaineth to uh, Saul and to all his house. Now therefore thy sons and thy servants shall till the land for him. And thou shalt bring in the fruits that the master's son may have food to eat. But Mephibosheth, thy master's son, shall eat bread always at my table. Now Ziba had 15 sons and 20 servants. Then said Ziba to the king, according to all that thy lord, the king, had commanded his servant, as I will do. As for Mephibosheth, Mephibosheth said the king, he shall eat at my table as one of the king's sons. Let's stop right there for a minute. Uh, I'm going to tell you, uh, sometimes we need to be reminded who we are in the Lord. Sometimes when we're going through uh, difficult times, trying times, tested times, difficult times, it gets to become so overwhelming that we forget who we are. Just like Mephibosheth, he said, called his own self when, when he bowed before David. He says, why are you taking such a notice of me? I, I, I'm just a, like a dead dog. In other words, sometimes the enemy will so come in upon us to make us forget who we are in the Lord. I'm going to tell you, we may not be anything within ourselves, but through the uh, power of, and, uh, and the transforming power of Almighty God, we are new creatures in Christ. Uh, uh, you know, we're not that old person we used to be. We have a new name written down in glory. We've been given a new name. Uh, uh, you know, we've been given a white stone. Uh, uh, you know, we've been given a new robe. Uh, we, you know, we, we've been uh, uh, we're called out of darkness into his marvelous light. In other words, don't forget that we have a covenant <coughs> with an almighty God. And he's not going to allow us. Uh, you know, when he comes to us, he doesn't let us stay in Lodabar, but he takes us up, lifts us up, and causes us to sit at the table uh, to eat uh, from the things that God of God's provision. Uh, those things that's going to cause us to grow and strengthen and to put on might in the power of God. A might is something that God himself, you know, uh, the Bible tells us to be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. That might is a, a, a giftedness that will come upon us that we're not moving in our own strength, but we're moving by the might of God that God has rested upon us. Can you say that? So don't forget who you are in the Lord. Uh, uh, remind yourself, I am a child of the Most High God. Uh, I've been purchased. I, I've been brought out. I've been set apart. I, I, I'm now connected to the vine. I'm now part of the household and, uh, of God. Uh, you know, we've been built upon the, the, the uh, prophets and the, the, uh, uh, the men of old. In other words, you know, we've, uh, that which was uh, etched out in the old covenant, uh, we're part of that lineage that's uh, a part of the blood-bought church that's been redeemed out. Uh, can you say man? We've been called to be separate uh, and, and to come unto God uh, and, and we need to remember or remind ourselves of that. Uh, don't let the devil overwhelm us uh, in these areas. we got to keep our faith uh, in him and, and, and uh, remember that covenant uh, is going to cause us to come up out of these things. Uh, God's not going to allow us to stay there. We're going to come out. 
Uh, our foundation has to be established upon Christ. When it talked about in uh, Matthew chapter 26, about the uh, uh, Jesus says, upon this rock I'll build my church, our foundation has to be on the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, because of that foundation, uh, it says we're built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, uh, in whom all the building fitly framed together uh, groweth unto a holy temple of the Lord, in whom you also are building uh, together to our habitation of God through the Spirit. Isaiah 28, 16, Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. Uh, he that believeth shall not make haste. That, fa that foundation's already been laid. It's already been laid. In, in uh, Zechariah 4, 7, he talked about uh, uh, Zerubbabel and how he had a mountain that was standing before him. And he says, uh, uh, he says, uh, the Lord uh, told him, he says, I want you to speak to that mountain. I want you to speak grace unto that mountain. And, and he began to speak grace unto that mountain. And as he began to speak grace, it says it became as a plain. In other words, it just smoothed right out. And he says, I want you to make the headstone of it and put on it grace, grace. In other words, uh, God's power, uh, there's nothing too great that should stand before us that we can't, through the power uh, that God equips us with and the grace that he releases to us, uh, be able to get past that mountain or get over that mountain or get through that mountain. In other words, uh, it says, the hands of the Lord have laid the foundation of this house. Uh, his hands shall also, the thing which he started, he's well able to finish it. And thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. Do not despise the days of small beginnings. Let me speak that to you right now. Don't despise the days of small beginnings. Uh, every one of us, we come to the Lord, we all come uh, at the same level of faith. We all come. You know, our pastor was talking last night about the little uh, mustard seed of faith. We've all been given that mustard seed of faith. We've all been blessed to get that seed. Help us to cultivate that seed. It's a small little seed, but the Bible says when it's full grown, that even the fowls of the air will come and lodge in its branches. So it's up to you and I what we do with the faith that's been dispensed and uh, deposited in each of our life. We can either take it and sit on it for 50 years and never do anything and just stay on the bank and be comfortable and just watch and let everybody else do that. But I'm going to tell you, every one of us have been called to do something specific. There's an anointing that wants to be released in your life. Every one of us has something that, that God is calling for to be used during this season and this time, and it's up to us to recognize that call. Can you say amen? We can look at the parables in chapter 25 about the talents that were given out. You know, and it's not the amount that you've got. We may say, well, I can't do it. I'd like to be like this one, or like a, if I can be like that one, or if I can preach like this one, or if I can be, I'm going to tell you, God's not looking for you to compare yourself or measure yourself with anyone else. He's looking for you to allow him to develop and cultivate and burst something out of the faith that he's deposited in you. Can you say amen? In Matthew 25, it talked about how that God handed out the talents or the giftedness or whatever you want to say, the callings, the anointings were handed out. He said one was given five, one was given three, and one was given one. It says the five took theirs, they went and they invested, they did something with it, they used it. It says that when the Lord returned, the Lord says, well done thou good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of the Lord. The one that was given three went and took his, he cultivated, he used it, he put it out there for service or whatever, and he he usually didn't sit on it, but he does something with it. The Lord says, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. But the one that was given one took his and hid it in the ground. And because he hid it in the ground, it says when the Lord came back to give an account for what he had done with his a portion that was given to him. Uh, he says, oh God, I know that you're a hard man. Uh, he said, I took it and I kept it for you. The Lord says, uh, thou slothful and wicked servant. Uh, this day says, uh, uh, you know, you're looked at as an unprofitable servant. You know, what you should have done is took that one and carried it out and done something with it. And upon my return, I would have blessed you double. Can you say amen? But because you've done this thing, I'm going to take that gifting, that anointing, that calling or whatever I've placed in your life and I'm going to carry it and I'm going to give it to the one that's 
uh, uh, that uses his, give it to the five that went out and did it. And he says, because the Bible says to whom much is given, much is required. In other words, I'm going to tell you whatever God has given you, whether it's a small, it doesn't matter if it's one gifting or if it's five giftings. He's, God's not looking at the amount. He's looking at what you do with what's been given. Because every one of us have been given a measure of faith. And at the day of his coming, he's going to find out. He's going to uh, cause you to have to give an account of what you've done with what he's placed within your hands. So it's up to us to make sure that we use that properly, that we handle it very carefully, that we use it for the glory of God, that we don't abuse it, that we don't hide it, that we don't run from it, that we embrace it, that we go for it and accomplish and do what God wants us to do. God says, uh, in, uh, 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 talked about, uh, of course, uh, praise the Lord, he said in, uh, that he's coming back to make sure that we, uh, uh, are well furnished. We want to make sure that we've uh, uh, prepared and ready uh, for the coming of the Lord. Uh, our foundation is sure uh, that we're standing strong in Him, that we're doing and using what God has given us to do, that we are a profitable servant, uh, That and He's the only one that's going to give the account. He's the one that will cause us to, uh, you know, we've got to measure up to His uh, uh, calling, to His uh, uh not our pastor, not our uh, teachers, but God is the one where we're going to give care. So our foundation has to be made sure. The Bible tells us that, uh, praise the Lord. Now I'm going to finish with this. It talks about our foundation being sure. And I want you to check tonight. I want you to go before the Lord. I want you to uh, say, Lord, if my foundation is not upon you and you alone, uh, uh, Lord, get me established in faith. Uh, get my faith upon you because the Lord uh, tells us in the scriptures that if, if our foundation is not upon the rock, upon the solid rock, you know, uh, it, it, we, we can either build our, uh, our house on the rock or upon the sand. And, and, and the Bible tells us that when the storms of life come, if we've built our house upon the rock, if we obey the word of the Lord, if we do what he tells us to do, our house is going to stand. But the Bible tells us if the house is built upon the sand and we've disobeyed the Lord, we've not obeyed, we've not done what God wants us to do, that our house will fall when the storms of life come. So we've got to make sure that our foundation is sure, it's true. So it tells us in 1 Corinthians 3, 10, according to the grace which is given to us as a master, I have laid the foundation, another buildeth thereon, but let every man take heed how he buildeth thereon. For no other foundation can man lay that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. So, you know, let's make sure uh, that we, our foundation is upon Jesus Christ and him crucified. Uh, uh, make sure that we, our, our uh, seed of faith, uh, we take it, we allow God to breathe upon it. Uh, we move in faith, we operate in faith. Uh, we allow him, regardless of what we're going through, if we uh, are... are overwhelmed by uh, situations of life and circumstances of life. Uh, if the enemy comes in like a flood to try to take from us, that God uh, let us lift up that standard of holiness and let us be established in truth, knowing that the Bible says, whom the Son is set free, the truth will make you free. In other words, uh, established on the faith and the truth of the Word of God. And as we do that, let God restore us fully and completely uh, unto holiness, bring us off the bank into uh, the waters that we can uh, not only uh, uh, step in but swim in. As we do that, I believe that if we do that, that uh, all is going to be well between us and the Lord. God's going to be well pleased with us as we yield and surrender to Him. So I would encourage you tonight to hold on, uh, uh, to be strengthened in God, uh, uh, seek the Lord, uh, find His will uh, for your life. And, and, and whatever he uh, calls you to do, do it with your whole heart. Uh, Lord, as I close tonight, I want to pray. I want to pray for restoration of homes and families. And Lord, those bitter places where, uh, you know, we've, we've been so overrun by the enemy of our soul that we are beginning to allow it to affect our hearts. Lord, root out the bitterness. You know, we t you told us that Esau sought repentance. Uh, uh, but he couldn't find it because he had sold his birthright. Lord, we don't want to be so embittered that the, the, your salvation 
uh, uh, the, the knowledge of knowing you and the, the, the separation from sin uh, help keeps us from knowing that, that, that we come into the fullness of who you are. Lord, like, uh, we will allow you to dig deep, to get out, to root out those things that hinder us uh, from being united with you. Unite our homes, bring us in the fullness of your spirit, release your glory upon the earth, upon the church, Lord. God, I encourage tonight, Lord, I speak truth and Lord, to go to every house. Lord, restore those marriages, restore those homes. Lord, put life in the uh, uh, the homes and speak to the minds, Lord. We transform them, Lord. Give them new revelation. Give them new vision, Lord. Give them direction, Lord. And uh, get, let the hope of the gospel, Lord, be released, Lord. Uh, save their children, their loved ones, Lord. Restore everything, Lord, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. 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 Amen. Thank you.